Hey everybody. Today we're constructing prediction intervals and confidence intervals for linear models in R. Our main tool is going to be the predict function. I've pulled up the help file with question mark predict and then navigated to the specific um, predict.lm command which is going to be working underneath the hood for our linear model that we're going to build. I'm going to be working with the penguins data set in this vid that's contained in the model data package, part of the tidy models family of packages. So I've loaded up model data and I've also loaded up tidyverse, of course. I am going to be working with a modified version of the penguins data frame. Here's the pre-processing pre -processing that I'm doing. I'm just going to be looking at the uh, daily penguins and in particular I'm going to be looking at ones where I don't have missing data. So here's the data set. There are 151 observations, seven variables, and I am going to be most interested here in bill length as modeled in terms of bill depth. So before we start doing any linear modeling here, we should get a plot of our data to make sure that the scatter plot has a generally linear shape. We should have a vague idea that a linear model is appropriate here. So ggplot a daily. And on the x-axis, let's put bill depth. And on the y-axis, we'll put bill length. And we'll just get a geo point. There we go. So I do see a general linear shape. There does seem to be a little bit more spread to the data there on the right side of the plot than on the left. But it doesn't look too, too bad. Hopefully, uh, hopefully when we look at our diagnostic plots, they'll seem OK. Let's go ahead and get a model using the lm command. And we are going to want to model, again, the bill length in millimeters as a function of bill depth in millimeters. And the data is going to be the a daily set that I've just created. So let's plot this and see how it looks. First off, we're getting a residuals plot. Here we're hoping to see no particular trend to our residuals. In particular, we'd like to see a horizontal red line, and that's more or less the case. Next is the normal QQ plot. We'd like to see points that are fairly close to the line, y equals x here. Again, that seems to be the case, indicating that the residuals are more or less normally distributed here, another assumption of this linear model. Next is the scale location plot. So we have this um, square root of standardized residuals going up and down versus the fitted residual fitted the, versus the fitted values going left and right. Here again, we'd like to see a horizontal red line. Um, we see this one has a slightly upward slope, indicating that the spread of those residuals is getting larger as we move from left to right in this plot. We are having a little bit of heteroscedasticity here. Hopefully, though, it's not too bad. That's a relatively flat red line. Finally, residuals versus leverage. This is indicating if we have any extreme outliers in our set. Um, the Cook's distance cutoff here, 0.5, isn't even visible on this plot. So we're definitely OK in terms of outliers, as we would hope. So we'd like to construct confidence intervals and prediction intervals for our model. Now, ggplot does have a geome built in for this, at least for the confidence intervals. So let's start just by using that. So I'm just going to go back up here to the ggplot command I already have, and I'm going to insert a geome smooth with method equals quote lm. You can see that we've gotten, in addition to our regression line, we have gotten a confidence interval as well. In particular, this is a 95% confidence interval for the conditional mean bill length in millimeters, um, conditional upon bill depth in millimeters. So you imagine specifying a bill depth in millimeters and then looking at all of the um, bill lengths that you would have for bill depths of that length, taking those means. And this is the confidence interval for that. We have some control over that. For instance, we can change the level of it. Let's make it a 99% confidence interval here. So to be more confident, we're going to need a wider interval. We should expect more gray on this next plot. And in fact, that's the case. What if we want a prediction interval? In other words, what if we just want to specify one new a daily penguin and we would like to construct, say, a 95% prediction interval for the length of its bill, given the depth of its bill? 
Again, our workhorse here is going to be the predict command, and all we really need to pass it to start is the name of the linear model that we've created. So when we do that, we get one value out for every value of the explanatory variable in our data set. So in this case, we have 151 values. And this is just giving us back fitted values. If we want confidence intervals or prediction intervals, we can specify interval equals and then either confidence or prediction. So let's start with prediction. That's the one that we uh, we don't have a plot for yet. So let's let's start with that. When I hit enter, it's going to start by giving me a pretty ugly output. We'll tidy that up in a minute. OK. So you can see that in addition to the fitted values for each of our observations, we are also given lower and upper limits for this prediction interval. What I'd like to do is to combine this with the a daily set and then get some plots there. So here I have 151 rows in each of those data frames. They match up perfectly one to one. And so I'm just going to use the C bind command to put them together. I don't need to mess around with any sort of uh, any sort of join particularly. So um, how about a daily new? And we'll do a C bind. We'll take a daily. And let's do the thing that I just made. So maybe I'll just do a copy and paste. OK, notice that warning command that we got. Predictions on current data refer to future responses. So if we had another penguin that had that exact same build depth, this is what you would predict for, a, uh, for the build length. We're getting that warning because, of course, we're getting um, predictions for things that we already have in our data set. So it wants to be clear that we're predicting for new things that are not in our data set. Let's take a quick look at this to see what we have. And I need to type properly. As always, it's a challenge for me. OK, so on the left, it looks the same. The first seven columns are all the same. But now we've added the fit, the lower and upper limits for our 95% prediction interval. So let's plot that prediction interval. We're going to have to do this um, manually by getting a different geome for each thing we want to plot. So how about ggplot? Our data set now is a daily new. And in this first aesthetic, I'm only going to put in the x values, so the build depth. And the reason for that is I'm going to want different y values for each of my different layers. So let's start just with a geome point. And inside that geome point, I am going to need that y aesthetic. And in this case, I want bill length. We'll just see these as we go. Let's put in our regression line manually with geome line. And this time, our y values are going to be the fitted values here. So here I'm taking this column right here, the fit column. And um, if I'm putting in a regression line, I'm not going to feel comfortable unless it is blue, at least to start off. There we go. So now we'd like to put in these upper and lower limits as well. So I'm going to want another geome line in each of these. So geome line. And for this aesthetic, I need the y to be the upper. Let's make the color blue again. And how about we do a line type to be dashed. So there's the upper limit of our 95% prediction interval. I'm just going to copy and paste that to get the lower limit. I'm going to change the Y aesthetic to LWR. My two columns here that I want to plot being lower and upper. OK, so there's my 95% prediction interval for this linear model. I can change that level. So now I'm going back up to line 22, 23 here. And I am going to take this prediction interval that I created, and I'm going to give it a different level. Let's make the interval a little narrower by lowering our level of confidence. We should see those dotted lines get a little closer to the solid line now. And in fact, that's what happens. If we want confidence intervals instead for some reason, if we don't like ggplot's default out output, we can do that here with interval equal confidence. Let's leave it at 90%. 
This time, because we're doing a confidence interval for the conditional mean, we're expecting that interval to be much more narrow. So I'm expecting those dotted lines to shift right down towards the regression line. And in fact, that's the case.